Yes, if I and Sunday, I've got sports in this way. Five minutes, you're monitor now. Your name, Professor Godwin, a wonder ending come out where director West Africa Center for a cell biology of infectious pathogens. Any name come out now. Yang, a young chicken, a cracker, and friend, friend, who asked to a yet the Delta strain. Uh, Sonia, you beat me. I control the spread in the country. What immediately we should be doing it after recording cases of the de Delta strain in the country with uh, concerns about, you know, vaccines hitting the country uh, to ensure that we kept the spread of the disease in the country. Prof, good morning and thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. I hope you're doing well today, sir. I'm fine, are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. So, how concerned should we be as a nation with a Delta strain being recorded? Well, I think, I think we should be concerned. Mm. Because uh, this variant spreads more efficiently, uh, which means that uh, there's the possibility that our cases will start increasing. And you know, when the cases increases, that means that um, you know the hospitalization would increase, and unfortunately, we may we may lose something. So I think that we have to tighten up the measures again. Um, social gatherings have to be uh, reduced or, or eliminated completely uh, because for a variant that spreads the, that efficiently um, the, the worst thing is to have crowding of people uh, because if one person is infected in a crowd uh, potentially you could spread it to a, a lot of people now are you calling for the reintroduction of the eased restrictions previously yes i think i think we need to put back uh, restrictions for at least you know one to two months to make sure that it does we don't lose control in that respect are you talking about football are you talking about the hoteliers are you talking about uh, the trotters which were previously taking three three and, and and all these measures well I think the the biggest thing is gatherings of you know many people more than 100 people in a place um, you know weddings and funerals you know all all those things we need to we need to cut them back. All right, so let's look at the virus and the uh, d uh, demography of you know the those who are easily infected. Earlier, we knew that both, uh, those around 50, 60 were, you know, the ones that were easily knocked down by this disease. Now, from the records we have gotten from the cases that have been recorded, uh, the youth who were infected, uh, some of them have been able to recover on their own. Uh, can we try to understand how that happens, that uh, the youth are able to survive more than uh, the aged? Well, it's, it is related to, you know, your your other underlying conditions normally older people are likely to have other underlying conditions which make the disease more severe on them um, younger people are more likely to be more healthy overall and so they are able to uh, you know withstand the disease uh, more so i think it's still the same risk for our older people um that we need to try as much as possible to protect the old people from getting infected, especially those that are not vaccinated. You know, those who have been fully vaccinated, uh, at least that gives them protection from severe disease and death. So we have to worry about those who are not vaccinated. So if, if there are any older people who are not vaccinated, they need to take extra precaution and avoid uh, interacting with people who are not masked or going to uh, social events. What was the science saying in terms of uh, infection rates for, you know, the those in the twenties and those in the in, in the thirties as to uh, their survival rates? Oh yeah, the survival rate is much higher. Like like I mentioned, they are they are less likely to have severe disease. So, it's, uh, you know, their survival rate is pretty good. Even but for the Delta the variant? Is, yes, even for the Delta variant. Yes, mm -hmm. even for the Delta variant. Yeah. It's oh. just, the problem is that they, 
they would spread it because the younger people they go out and they bring it and they give it to their their parents and their grandparents and then they they are the ones that get severe disease and, and possibly lose their lives now would you suggest an enhanced you know testing regime and surveillance regime in the country so we would know how many people are asymptomatic but maybe having this delta variant yes i think that we need to bring on stream more rapid antigen testing uh, i've i've heard that a few of them have been licensed by the fda so we need to make some of those more available for voluntary testing so that for example if you went to uh, an event or a meeting they can do rapid antigen test at the gate before you go in you know to so that people who are actively shedding virus will be detected and then they, they they'll be asked not to go in so you could do that and then you could have places where people can voluntarily go and test you know so if you have the rapid antigen test it it helps a lot and it's also useful for quickly identifying people who have covid in the hospital setting so that you can quickly uh, isolate them and treat them uh, separately all right we've seen what the delta variant has done in india do you foresee that happening in ghana well it could if we are if we are careless it, we, we could get to that point you think um one of the things that worked against india was that they didn't take it seriously initially and they continued to have large uh, social gatherings religious events and and you know and all that and and that that's what allowed the virus to spread very quickly and they lost control of it so if we if we don't take precautions and and we continue to live our lives as usual yeah the data could get very bad because our vaccination rates are very low less than one percent of the population mm. has been vaccinated so if the the virus takes root and and starts to spread quickly yeah we could have a, a very difficult situation final question sir before you take leave of us uh, the government has indicated that it estimates that it would vaccinate uh, 20 million plus Ghanaians by the end of the year. Do you see that happening? No, it's not possible. You, 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 you know, um, a few months ago, I warned about this, that there were no vaccines coming from anywhere. And then uh, people thought I was uh, being alarmist. But if you look at the global scene, the vaccine supply situation is very difficult and i don't see how we're going to be able to vaccinate 20 million people between now and december i think we'll be lucky to vaccinate 5 million people between now and december what would it mean therefore when it comes to the target of reaching herd immunity if we are not able to you know vaccinate 20 million people um it I think the earliest we can get herd immunity will be the end of 2022. That will be the earliest. So this year, we have to forget about herd immunity and stick to our protocols and protect ourselves because herd immunity is not going to happen this year. There are just no vaccines. Prof, we're grateful you made time to speak to us this morning. Thank you. And that's uh, Professor. Uh, Gordon Awanda joining us this morning. He is a director of West Africa Center for Cell Biology uh, of Infectious Pathogens, sharing his thoughts with us. Uh, quite scary if you listen to the tail end of the conversation, especially the bit about head immunity.